Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. First Peter chapter two. Wherefore, right, in chapter one we're talking to strangers who are saved. Laying aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speakings. Put away with it. Get rid of it. Get rid of the sin. You're a new creature, as a newborn babes. So when you get the new birth, we've already looked at the at the new birth, John chapter three, and then chapter one we saw it in twenty three. You are starting your life all over again as a newborn babe. People say, "Oh, do can I get a second chance on life?" Yes, yeah, being born again, you can start it over again. Life begins at forty. Life begins at fifty. No, life begins at Calvary. At that moment, you got saved, and today, 30 years ago, I received Christ as my Savior. At this time, I, my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It was, it was early in the afternoon, on a Saturday morning, on Saturday afternoon. I became saved. All the sins of previously, 19 years, gone under the blood, I start off now fresh. In the Lord brand new babe desire the sincere milk of the word that's calcium if a baby does not have the milk he's not going to survive it's not something you get in the store it's not something that comes in a can it comes from mother want to be clean calcium the Word of God is spoken of as wheat as meat Hebrews 5.12, that's protein. It's spoken of as honey, Psalms 119.103, that's natural sugar. Proverbs 25.11, an apple, that's your vitamins. And then Luke 4.4, 4, it's talking about bread, that's your starch. So our diet from our birth, new birth, is to be the Word of God. Now, do I become like a Catholic and, you know, start chewing up my Bible and taking off little pieces and start eating? See, no, that's, it's not literal. Take the body of Christ and literally eat it. That's not the Bible doctrine. So here it's not literal. It's speaking about, you want strong bone growth? You want to mature as a Christian? You need the Word of God. Why? Because all through your Christian life, we, we have been warned by Paul. We're warned about the apostles. We're warned by Jesus. We're warned all over the Bible. There are heresies. There are deceivers. There are people who are not looking out for our interests, including the enemy, Satan. So you better have the Word of God to know from this straight forth of your new birth where to go, where not to go. No Christian is without not example to live. He needs to pick up the Bible and he needs to feed on it. That ye may grow thereby. So you grow by the Word of God. I got videos. I got these other books from the Christian, you know, area of the library and the, and the, the bookstore has. No, 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 no. I got these books on prayer. No, 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 no. You grow by the Word of God. You don't grow by other books. The best commentary in the Bible is the Bible. I'm writing a series of things about men and women in the Bible. I'm in Genesis. 
And all I'm using is the Bible about the men and women. I may run to a couple other sources for definition, for other things, but I am doing this book totally on the Bible. If the Bible doesn't say anything about that person, I'm not writing it. I'm not writing what men think. I don't care. We'll write what God says. That's what we're to feed upon. Growth comes by the Bible. And that's for all ages growth. Even when you're a teenager, you're growing. When you're a young person, you're growing. When you're old, you're still growing. So you still need the Word. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Again, those Catholics will run to this verse and say, you know, yum, 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 yum. No. This Bible is sweet. This Bible is, is, is honey. It's great. It's wonderful. It's my letter from God to me. It's my personal Bible. You ought to have a Bible that is your Bible. It ought to have your tears in it. It ought to have your dirt in it. Your coffee stains, your notes, your prayers. It ought to be your personal book. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Now, this, this is my own personal opinion. So, this can go in the garbage can. But what if God were to resurrect our Bibles for us to have in eternity? Isn't that something interesting? Some people wouldn't have a Bible. Some of their Bibles would be still wrapped in plastic. There may be a great dust storm in heaven when they blow off to open it up. I've tasted the Bible. It's good. It's wonderful. I've heard the Bible. I've read the Bible. I've studied the Bible. I've heard messages from the Bible. To whom coming? As to a lively stone, disallowed, indeed of men but chosen of God and precious now this is Jesus Christ we're, we're going to see a few more scriptures about this but this is Jesus Christ the cornerstone this is the rock that Daniel speaks about that's cut without hands and destroys all the nations this is the stone that Jesus said hey I'm the chief cornerstone and if you won't receive me on you you'll trip over me You'll it'll stumble on you, and you'll be broken. You'll be powderized. Christ is our rock. Paul says that that rock that followed them in, in the wilderness, that rock was Christ. The chief stone is a, is a pyramid. That chief stone is the one that goes all the way in the top. New Agers have stolen that, as you will see in your back of your dollar bill. And the Masons and all that. They steal that, that one eye of God. God has two eyes. Came in the form of Jesus Christ, a body. Indeed, a man but chosen of God and precious. The Lord Jesus Christ, God said, you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God told uh, Jesus in the garden, it's you. My will is you die for their sins. You take all those sins. Nevertheless, thy will be done, Father. So who's the most important one that God ever chooses? Jesus Christ. Ye. That's to say, people, that's me. Also. So verse 4 is talking about Jesus Christ. Verse 5, us. As lively stones. Now, what's a lively stone? You can't talk to a rock. Though there's things in rocks that record. When I was uh, uh, growing up, I forget if it was a teenager or younger than that, we had this thing called the pet rock. It sold the money, money. But it didn't do nothing. You couldn't walk it. You couldn't feed it. It didn't do nothing. So what is a lively stone? It's a pearl. Pearls are gemstones that are alive from inside a living organism. So, let's, let's refresh here now. Let's refresh. Gold, silver, precious stones. What are those precious stones at the judgment seat of Christ? They're lively stones. They are people that, have won, that come to Jesus Christ by you being part of their life. 
and witnessing to them. And they come to Jesus Christ. They are the lively stones. Pearls. Are built up a spiritual house. It's not a church building. There is no church building. I am the church building. And I'm not brick or stone or masonry. I am a pearl of a great price. I'm not a man-made brick no more. Listen, one day, with my mom and my dad, I was a man-made brick. Right? So were all you. So is any lost man. They're made from a woman from a man. Man-made brick. That's what they made the Tower of Babel out of. Man-made brick. Then I came to Jesus Christ. I was born again. I became saved. I changed that brick for a pearl. I'm living. I'm alive. And I'm built up of Christ. A building. A house. A foundation. Found in Corinthians. A foundation that no man can ever lay that. But that is Jesus Christ. And we're built upon that. A holy priesthood. Ooh, ooh. I am a priest. I just don't call myself Father Hayward or Father Tyler. But I can walk up to any Catholic priest and say, how you doing? I'm a priest still. Uh, Revelation chapter 1. I am more of a priest than you're a priest because guess what? My God listens to me. Your God don't listen to you. Baal does not listen to you. As my family and I read tonight. The house of Baal. If Baal was so good, why didn't he protect any of his people? And that with uh, Elijah. So I am a priest. I just don't wear my collar backwards. Anybody who is a child of God is not only a child of God, you're a stone, a precious stone, a lively stone, you're a pearl, and you are a priest. That harlot of Babylon with her pearl, she's an imitation. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. Now, what is that? I don't lift up a goat. I don't lift up a lamb. I don't bring turtle doves. Brother, I, I got problems. Can you pray for me? Yes, I'll pray for you. Uh, this sister's in the hospital having problems. We need prayer for Pray for her. Praying for her. When I pray for people... As John the Baptist's father went into the holy place and offered up that incense for prayer. I am doing the same office that John the Baptist's father did. I am putting that smoke up before God and God, somebody needs something. That's the prayer life I have. No one in Jerusalem can walk into that temple that's still there. This is 60 AD. And... Listen, one man went in there, uh, oh, I had his name, I forget, he was a king. I think he had good intentions, but he came out with a leper. John the Baptist's father, man, he freaked out when, when, that, when, the, when the angel showed up, Gabriel, you're not supposed to be, what's going on in here? But I can walk into the holy place in heaven. I can walk into the most holy place, the holy of holies, and say, Father, I've I got a petition before you. Yes, son. What is it? That's the priestly office I have. There's only one thing I can't do as a priestly office. I can't offer the blood of other people for sins. I can't do that. They've got to come to the Father with the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world on their own. I can't do that office. I can't forgive sins. That's not my priestly office. But I can offer up prayers. That is. I can take someone and say, hey, you want to learn the Bible? You want to, you want to be an apostolate of Jesus Christ? You want to learn? I can do that. I can give you classes about the Bible. God is instructing me. I can do that. I can't forgive your sins and I can't wash away your sins. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now look at that. That rules out the Roman Catholic Church. When you go into that priest and you buy and four Hail Marys, uh, God, that's not acceptable to God. By Jesus Christ, when you come out of there and say four Hail Marys, 
It's not Jesus Christ. So that Catholic should read his Bible and say, well, wait a minute. I'm going to the priest for a sacrifice of my sin, and he's sending me out not by Jesus Christ. Hail Mary, full of grace. So what they're doing is violating the scriptures. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, God's Son. As a child of God, my Father hears me. Now, I'm not bragging, but that's where I stand. Wherefore, also it is contained in the scriptures, that's important. Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, chosen. Precious, and he that believeth on him that stone shall not be confounded. That's not made a shame. Romans ten says, "He that believeth on is not ashamed." Job thirty-eight six, Ephesians two twenty to twenty-two, Isaiah forty-two one. That stone is Jesus Christ. And to believe on him as your savior. In the eternity, there's no shame. You'll be forever glad you made that choice that day. Unto you, therefore, which believeth, these are the strangers, that are saved, he is precious. What is it? Precious Savior, how so, how so sweet the hymn goes. He's precious to us. We love him. But unto them which be disobedient. People who have reject Jesus Christ. The people you give in tracts and reject. The people you preach to. Tell them about Jesus. That don't believe. That reject God. The stone which is which the builders disallowed. Rejected. Did not want. I don't want that one. I want Mary, I want Allah, I want magazines, I want whatever. The same is made the head of the corner. That's the capstone. And again, that capstone has been perverted by organizations. A stone of stumbling, tripping over. You trip over, you fall. A rock of offense, that's against you. It's not for you. Even to them which stumble at the word. So I, I've said this all through the New Testament. If you're witnessing to somebody, you better use the word. And they're going to reject Jesus Christ. It better be the word you're preaching. If I go to the street and tell them the gospel of Christ died for our sins according to scripture, was buried and rose again, According to the scriptures that only Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And they reject God by what I say. Let it be the word of God that I say and nothing else. Being disobedient, they have not received the word. They rejected the word. Whereunto also they were appointed. So it's not good to reject God. It's not good to say no to Jesus. But let's get back to us again. But ye, that's me, are a chosen generation. How's that? I'm a generation that will end in the rapture from the time that began with the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. From the, from the resurrected Christ to the rapture. We are a generation. Chosen. You can look up to somebody who's religious and say, hey, God loves me more. He don't know who you are. Watch this again, just in case you got it wrong. A royal priesthood. Ooh. Revelation 1.5. You know why I'm royal? Look who my father... What? Yeah, look who my father is. God... So when I'm a priest and I'm an ambassador of my God, God of all royalty, God of all law, 
That's a position that no man can have. A holy nation. Now you would think Peter's talking about the Jews and the Levites. This is no Levitical priesthood. This is no nation of Israel. Because it was a reservation that we read the other night. All by the blood of Jesus Christ. That nation of Israel today is not under the blood and was not under the blood when Peter was alive as a corporate group of people. But right now, the body of Christ, a holy nation. We get a city, New Jerusalem. We are given a name in this nation, Christians. Not Americans, not Polish, not Catholic, not English. Our name is Christians under the nation of a holy nation. And if you don't believe so, watch this one. A particular people. Peculiar, particular, yeah, I can't. Peculiar people. Now you try doing what the Bible tells you to do and have other Christians profess to be Christian. Look at you like you're the oddball. What are you doing? Doing what the Bible tells you in the Bible. And the world looks at you. And our witness. You're a fool. Yeah, but we're a fool for Christ. And the Bible already said. Standing up yelling at you through the Bible is foolish. But the message we preach is not foolish. That ye, again, us, should show for the praises of him, God... Jesus, who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, John chapter 3. I'm no more a cockroach. That light came on, hey! And I love that light evermore. Again, today's the day that the light came on, and I don't run away from it. I want more light. And I take the light and I go out to the world and I flash it around and people, oh, no, shut up. Get out of here. We don't want that. You're a bunch of cockroaches. Cockroaches don't like the light. You walk up to a priest in the Catholic Church, say, here's the gospel. Here's what the Bible, no, I don't want that. No doctor in our church, our church, mother church. You're a cockroach. Because if you for real, you will want the light. But men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil, John chapter 3 says. What separates a man from being a, a child of God is what is your reaction to the light? Light gives life. Which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Now, this is what I'm going to say. He's not talking to Gentile and Jews. Gentiles were never of God, ever. They were called strangers and dogs. You realize what, what Jesus called that woman that wanted him to heal his her daughter that was possessed with the devil? I can give you a name for that, but it would be quite cruel. Get that dog out of here. So this would point to those strangers that Peter is saying that they're Gentiles. Peter's being like a little, you know, Peter didn't, didn't like Gentiles, you know. Lord, uh, I don't touch on an unclean. Don't you call anything unclean. I can't? You mean I can't call Corinthians unclean? No, you can't. He's mine now. Okay, I'll call them strangers. Peter, your mouth is going again. A little bit of prejudice. Didn't Paul have to ball Peter out? What are you doing? You're sitting down there with those Gentiles. You're having a meal with them. Then the Jews show up. And then you took off. And then you, I think it was Paul. You left him. was one of the disciples. You left him. And anyway, what's going on here? I don't know. This, but we all love Peter. He's excellent. Give him much credit. He loved the Lord. Which in time past were not a people. But are now the people of God. Ooh, what a thing. I'm a people of God, which had not obtained mercy. That'd be Gentiles, Ephesians 
but now have obtained mercy. Jesus told those uh, those disciples, go out unto the Israel, not the Gentiles, not the nations. So Peter now, hey, it's the Gentiles. They're in. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here. It's not so. See where they got that from? They got it from Peter. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshy lusts which war against the soul. Okay? Galatians 5 17. When it comes to lust and your flesh, treat those sins as ew, that's strange treat that as bad as the gent as the gentiles were to the jews ew that's filth that's ew, get them out of here they stink as a dog was unclean as a cat was unclean as a pig was unclean to the jews get that filth of sin out from here get it out Having your conversation, that's your life, that's your conduct, that's your manner. Honest among the Gentiles. You're going to do business with the Gentiles? You do an honest business. You owe him a penny, you give him a penny. You owe him a half hour, you give him a half hour. Don't you dare cheat them. Don't you cheat anybody who's not saved being saved. Ooh, that's not today. That were as they speak against you as evildoers. I don't care what they say about you. I don't care what lies they say about you. You give them an honest report, an honest pay, an honest duty. Whatever it is you do is honest. If they say anything against you, it better be a lie. He's just getting strong here. They may be your good works, which they should, which shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. In other words, you live such a conduct of life that when God does come and they stand at judgment, they're going to look at you like, hmm, you were right. You were the person I should have followed. You were the person I should have treated right, but I didn't do it. And now I know why you did what you did. You didn't do it just to make me mad. You didn't do it to be a jerk. You did it because you were a Christian. And that conduct and that life will condemn the person that, that affected you in your life. We have people come up to us all the time at the farmer's market. You guys are here faithfully. You guys, we, we didn't think you were going to come, but we knew you were going to come. And that conduct, even though we they hate us being there, they know we're going to be there by the word unless something happens. And that they do not believe Jesus Christ as their Savior. They will stand at the great white throne judgment that we wish we would admire to your faithfulness. Our faithfulness to them with the word of God, we should have listened. We should have heard. And who knows? They may have to apologize to us. I don't know. I'm not worthy of apologizing. But maybe. Submit yourselves. Uh-oh. Give me a big racer. I'm going to race this one out of here. Because it, 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 if you're American Christian, I'll give you a few minutes to, to go get something to eat, get coffee. Okay. They must be getting their coffee right now. Romans 13, Proverbs 24, 21 Titus 3 1 submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake and we all got trouble with that one me too that speed limit says 65 you do that for the Lord you don't do 66 you don't do 67 you don't do 68 okay you need a permit to, to do something on your property every ordinance now the only ordinance that we are told in the book of Acts that we are not to follow that man gives us if man says don't preach the Bible don't pray then we have from God 
go ahead, disobey that ordinance, but you're going to have to pay anyway. It may cost you life, it may cost you jail, but you need to look in the history of America and look in the history of Europe to realize that people did break that law of man and they suffered for it and God was proved of it. But if you break man's law that has, uh, that it has nothing to do with the Bible, and you go to the judge, I got rights, I'm a Christian, and all that. You the one that did wrong. And if you do something contrary and stupid to the law, they have the right, Romans 13, to put you in jail. They have the right to give you a fine of $50 or whatever it is. And you can't go to God and say, God, help. no, no, you're no idiot. You're to obey. Whether it be to the king. Oh, see, that's not America. We don't have a king no more. As supreme or under governors oh there's your 50 states you knew God's gonna put that one in there we may have the president but as far as each state the leadership of our state it relies on one person and what is that title governor so the governor said hey in this state we're going to do something because there's many laws that are outside a federal district You've got to obey that state. If you don't like that, we have 50 others you can choose from. As unto them that are sent by him, God, God sent them. God sent Obama. Oh, I just had a bunch of people turned it off. God sent Trump. God sent Clinton. God sent Queen Elizabeth. God sent Putin. God sent Na uh, Na 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 I can't remember that guy's name in Israel. Every world leader has been sent by God. Even if they gave in to Satan and bowed down before Satan, Job 1 and 2, God said, I'll put you. God rises up, ruler. God puts down rulers. I don't like this tax. God said you can do it to the rulers. And God said you're to obey. Sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. Well, America switched on that. In America, the ones that do the crimes get more benefits than the ones who are innocent. We had a couple weeks ago, we had... One o'clock in the morning, one of our neighbor's horns went off all night long. We had to suffer with it. But the people who was guilty, they didn't get nothing. Well, we, we tried and can't find them or anything like that. They didn't get their car towed away. They didn't get a ticket. They didn't get no warning or anything like that. But we had to suffer. And when America today, when a person gets a, gets arrested, he gets a ride to the, to the station. He gets a free phone call. If he can't afford a lawyer, he'll get one for free. And then when he goes to jail, he gets free clothing, he gets free shower, he gets free water, he gets free food, he gets free security for it. Get the... And then in the case of rape, that guy doesn't even have to testify in the courtroom, but that woman has to dishonor herself, and she's already been... been put to abuse by that guy has to stand in the courtroom and give an account God will, will judge this nation because the guilty are made just and the just are made guilty that's wrong punish the evildoer the government is supposed to take those that break the law and go after them and for the praise of them that do well it's, it's backwards in America. That's why you have crooked cops. Let's say all cops are crooked, but the crooked ones. For so is the will of God. People say, well, what's the will of God? Obey the, the leaders and authorities of this nation. How's that? That's the will of God. That with well-doing, if I do what I'm supposed to be doing, he may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. And that, that verse is right there. Listen, the foolish, the, the, the crime and all that. We're supposed to silence them. 
We're supposed to put them to shame. That doesn't happen. But at the judgment seat of Christ, it will. As free, home of the brave and home of the free, and not using your liberty, being free, for a cloak, that's a covering, of maliciousness. We are not, you know, listen, I can do whatever I want as a Christian. That's, that's a Bible. I can do whatever I want. Hebrews 11 says about Moses, he could enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. But with that freedom I have, I am not supposed to use it for sin. And when I do sin, I am supposed to be sorry. I am supposed to repent of that sin. Because it says, but as the servants of God. God has given me liberty in this country and all of us. That we can preach the gospel without the police arresting us. Without people taking us off and killing us. Right? We've got that freedom to meet in an assembly called a church. Right? How many of you think Christians out there miss that and don't do that? How many Christians go door to door? How many Christians meet on the street somewhere? How many Christians go out and pass out gospel truth? When was the last time somebody came up to you at Walmart and said, Hey, I'd like to tell you about Jesus Christ. Would you like to have a gospel track about Jesus Christ? When was the last time you went down the street looking at the store window saying, Repent, turn off, burn! Don't you hear that? You know what? You know what the, the American Christian wants? He wants the freedom so he doesn't pay taxes. He wants it so I can do whatever I want, have a gun, and do whatever I want. He's supposed to be doing it for God. And if God takes that freedom of, of, that we have today, He'd be all right and holy to do it because the church is not using it like God has given it to. The freedom of America came from Newport, Rhode Island, from Doctor uh, from Doctor Clark. And Obadiah Holmes. And that freedom that we have in America today is to serve God, not to miss God. And too much in this country, we're missing God. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. That's the Christians. Fear God. Honor the king. Just in case you didn't get the previous verses. Servants. Ooh, that's a bad word today. I wonder what the, the African American Bible say about that. Yeah, that's a bad word for them, you know. But they forgot that Israel was servants in Egypt. Be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to good and gentle, but also to the forward. Now, what's that? That's your boss. You know, don't treat the good boss, the likable boss. Hey, you're such a good guy. Treat that nasty boss that cusses and, and, and blows the smoke in your face and, and calls you every name under the book. You have no excuse. You're to treat them with respect. As an employee. You don't like it? Quit and get another job. That's what the Bible says. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience towards God endure grief and suffering wrongfully if I serve God and I do right and I am mistreated because of God for but no women if I am mistreated because of God by man I miss promotion I don't get anything because hey you're a Christian I can take advantage of you I can you know walk all over you for well, what glory is it if when you be buffeted, that struck, hit him? You can't be hit in America today. You can take him to court. There were people that Peter's writing to you go to work and they will beat you because you're a Christian at your job. And you are still going to do your job. There are no rights. None 60 AD. If you are buffeted, they buffeted Jesus Christ. I'm gonna get a lawyer, I'm gonna get the no. for your faults. The fault is being a Christian. Ye shall take it patiently. 
But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. You lost your job because you're a Christian. God said, I like that. God, I like that. When somebody comes to you out and calls you every name in the book like they do with my daughter, God looks down and says, I like that. I like that. Imagine that idiot down there going up to a to a 13-year-old girl. And says, Won't go up to his father, but go up to that little girl. God says, I like that. That girl just sat there like, I don't know what she thinks. But for even, okay, here we go. For even, hereunto were ye called. I don't think it's fair they should treat me like that. Uh, because Christ also suffered for us. Uh-oh. Leaving us an example. Did Christ ever call a lawyer? Did Christ ever go to the Workmen's Compensation Board or whoever? That ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin. Uh, you know what? I, anybody does anything to me, it, it'd be worth it because I'm a sinner. Right now, I'm at the point that things happen to me in my life. I'm like, well, why don't you say something? Now, I can almost name that point in time that, you know what? I'm getting back. Galatians 6, 7. Let's just shut up and just hope it's not too much to get back. And Lord God, I repent of that sin if I haven't repented of it yet and do it. I mean, there are a few times I, I should have been in jail. One time in particular. And I sat in the police office. They were ready to put the cuffs on me. They came to my door right now and misarrested me because I preach on the street. Well, there's plenty of times I should have been in jail. But Jesus Christ had no sin. What did he do? Absolutely nothing. Matter of fact, his judge declared three times... And the judge that was over that judge said, hey, I find no fault in him. And even the one that brought him to trial said, a precious innocent blood. I can't say that, friends. And you can't say that either. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Well, I'm sorry. I cuss. I'm sorry. I say things I shouldn't say. I get angry with my mouth. But Christ didn't. And yet, look what he got for my sins. Maybe we should suffer a little more. Who did no sin was God, was God not found in his mouth. Uh, let's see, four. Deceit was not found in his mouth. Who, Jesus, when he was reviled, reviled not again. And when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. God. God, you see what happened to me with that job? Yeah, I'm accepted. I like that. Don't you worry. I'll take care of you. God, you see what that man said? Yeah, I see that. I like that. It's acceptable. It's so funny. When we get mistreated, we look at God, and God's like, I like that. We already got God looking at us like it's a big smile. It's like, no, it shouldn't be a smile, should it? Should it? God, we don't deserve to be treated like that. I like that, though. You remember what happened to my son? I turned my back on my son. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? When's God ever forsaken me? Come on, name the time. When's God ever forsaken us? And yet he forsake Jesus Christ on that cross when the sin became on him. The sin became on him. Who him, uh, who his, Jesus, own self, bared our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed, Isaiah 53. You ever read Isaiah 53, what happened to Jesus? 
says, who is believed our report? He is despised and rejected of men. So why should I not be shocked when I'm despised and rejected of men? Am I above Jesus Christ? I trove not. For ye, that's me, were as sheep going astray. Look at it. He is now quoting right out of Isaiah 53. This is Isaiah 53. But are now returned unto the shepherd. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. This is the one that said, Hey, didn't I see you with him? No, I don't know who he is, ladies. Shut up. Ooh, it's hot. It's cold out here. Ooh, warm my, hey, how you guys doing? Hey, didn't I see you in the garden with him? No, 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 no. I don't know who he is, ladies. You're, you're full of that. Get out of here, will you? Fire is nice and good. Hey, you sound like one of them. No, no, cursing blank, 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 blank. I don't know that man. Jesus, you love I mean, Peter, you love me. Lord, you know I love you. Peter, you love me. Oh, Lord, you know I love you. For we were as sheep. Going to, that's the one that betrayed Jesus Christ and left in agony of tears when he was standing on his trial. Peter's giving us a great report because he denied Jesus three times. He has right to say this. I left him as a sheep. And he told Peter that night, you guys are going to smite the shepherd and the sheep. Listen, he's quoting Jesus. He's quoting Isaiah 53. This personally happened to Peter. He knows what he's talking about. But are now returned unto the shepherd. That's a personal testimony of Peter. I'm back with the shepherd. And bishop, another title stolen by the church, and the shepherd stolen by the church, but let's leave them alone. Not worthy to talk about them here. Of your soul. That shepherd is the shepherd of my soul. You know, the Bible says with sheep, if he gets lost, now I can't get lost as eternal, but if I go lost, missing, he comes and gets me. They say if a sheep, you know, he gets injured, that, that shepherd will pick him up, take care of him. If that sheep gets sick, he takes care of him. There are shepherds out there, and, and they don't take care of their sheep, but that shepherd will take care of his sheep. He will protect his sheep. When, when he puts him in that sheep coat, it, it's, it's a... It's a kind of a building with four walls. In the front of it, there, there's a doorway. There's only one doorway. It's high enough that animals can't get in and they can't get out. And what that shepherd does, he lays in that doorway. And the only way you're going to get to that sheep is you got to crawl over him. Or only way for that sheep to get out of that, 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 that building is you got to crawl over him. He lays down his life for the sheep. He loves those sheep. And the bishop, he guides them. He tells them. He instructs them. He tries all he can to get them going. Don't you worry. We got a shepherd. We got a bishop that loves and takes care of the sheep. And he will be crowned Lord of all. King of kings. Lord of lords. How wonderful Jesus Christ is.